Been looking forward to this for a long time. Goodbye, cardboard. Now you have to treat the jack a little bit differently from the pots. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can't tie a knot around the threads of this thing and still have it fit through the hole. The knot will just make it too big. So instead I'm going to feed the string right through the center of the jack and then tie something to the end of the string. I'm just going to use a washer here, but anything that's the right size will work. I'm just going to put a good double knot in that. And then this way, when you pull on the string, the washer at the end of the string will bump up against the end of the jack and pull the whole jack along with the string. Now it's a good idea to do a quick sanity check before you start installing the components in the guitar. First of all, if your potentiometers have any uh, positioning tabs on the side of the pots, these are these little metal tabs that are sticking up, just take some sharp cutters and snip them off. Uh, I've already done mine. And uh, also, you know, double check your wiring, make sure none of the wires broke. With all this twisting, uh, twisting around of the wires, sometimes, uh, you know, if you had a bad solder joint, uh, something could break off. So go ahead and fix those now if you, uh, if you need to. And then just make sure that the strings didn't get too tangled up with all of our messing around and that they're basically laid out in the right order for the way we're going to be feeding them into the guitar. So starting with the jack, we'll be feeding the components through the widest part of the F-hole here. You'll see why that blue tape was a good idea once you feel all the sharp edges bumping up against the F-hole. So after the jack will come the tone pot. These are, these are the furthest components away from the F-hole. Uh, and because the cable lengths are pretty short, you're going to find that you know, you're pretty quickly committed to shoving everything on through. Uh, next up will be middle and bridge here. And it's important as you're uh, putting the components in to try not to twist them or get them tangled with the string. It's a very common mistake that bites me every time is that uh, I shove things in and they get sort of twisted around and the string gets caught on one of the lugs of the pots. And then later when I uh, come along to try to pull the pot through with the string, the pot's upside down because the string got stuck on the lug. So just do your best and expect that you may have to go back and pull something back out to reorient it. So next up is the uh, switch and the neck here. All right, it's time to pull the jack through. So I pull the tape off and then gently pull the string until you feel the jack connect with the body of the guitar. You may need to take some needle on those pliers and just give it a little nudge to line it up and then pull it on through. I just snipped off the end of the string because it was getting a bit frayed. With a nice clean cut, it's easier to feed the washer and the nut over the end of the string like this. And then I can just uh, drop them down over the jack and tighten it up. All right, well the bridge and middle pots are in, no problem, but the uh, tone pot's giving me some grief. I'm trying to shove it through with my finger, but it's getting a little bit stuck on something. Um, I see. So. The string around the end of the knurled shaft seems to be getting stuck up against the edge of the hole. Um, so if I use the needle on those pliers, I'm going to just yank on the string here, um, pulling, basically pulling the knot of the string through the hole is what's letting it come through. And there we go. Just snapped into place. Now the other pots are in place. The last one is the neck volume. And looking through the hole, I can see that I forgot to trim off the excess string on the knot, and it's kind of getting in the way. So I'm just going to use the needle nose pliers again to reach down in there and grab the string, pull it through first so that it's out of the way. And then the shaft of the pot should just pull right through. There we go. And lastly, the switch, I didn't tie any string to it. So I'm just going to reach down from below and shove it up through the hole. There we go. Now that everything's in place, I can bundle up the excess wire here. It's the uh, ground wire from the bridge and the neck pickup wire. And, uh, tie it off with a cable tie. Just clip that with some sharp cutters. And then I can tuck that in and get it out of the way so you won't see it through the F-hole. Getting ready to put the washer and nut on this pot here and I'm realizing it wasn't pulled all the way through. So I'm just giving it a firm tug with some support from behind. And then just tearing the string off of there. I'm going to take the washer and the nut and just hand tighten them for now. We'll come back and uh, tighten it with a crescent wrench later. Now I can't just pull the jack string out because it's got a washer tied to the end of it. So low tech solution, I'm just going to shake it around and let gravity pull the washer down a bit until it's in view. And I can reach in uh, like a game of operation and uh, pull it out with a needle on those pliers. There we go. 
All right, last chance before tightening it all down to plug it in and make sure it's working as you expect. And if it's all good, then uh, it's time to tighten the nuts down. Now pay attention as you're tightening these down that the component itself isn't twisting underneath you as you're turning the nut. Uh, the pots tend to hold themselves in the place, but the jack in particular uh, is pretty easy to twist as you're tightening. And if it twists too far, the wires underneath can actually break off. So one approach to holding the jack in place is to feed a pair of needle nose pliers through the hole, exert strong outward pressure with your fingers while you tighten it with a crescent wrench. Also, I should have mentioned that I put down a flat washer first, then a lock washer, and then the nut. And hopefully that sandwich will help keep the jack nice and tight. Before pushing the knobs over the pot shafts, turn all the pots all the way down. And then try to position the knobs so that the zeros are all pointing in the same direction. Uh, it's most common to have the zeros pointing at about uh, 7 o'clock from the player's perspective. Now if you're finding one of the knobs is a bit hard to push down over the pot split shaft, you could try squeezing the split shaft a bit with some pliers first, and then give the knob a little rocking motion back and forth while you're pushing down on it, and that should help it to seat properly. Alright, finishing touches. It's time to take the blue tape off. Now if this has been on there for a long time, it might be pretty sticky, but it should still come off pretty easily. And if it leaves any tape residue behind on the guitar finish, you can just use the tape itself to remove the residue. Stick it like this and it'll come right off. Any other fingerprints or smudges should just rub right out with a soft cloth, or you can use your favorite polish spray or whatever. Get all this other junk out of the way, and there it is, all back together. Ta-da! Well, all right, it's time to polish it off, tune it up, and rock on. I hope this has been helpful, and thanks for watching.